Hi everyone, welcome to Healing Hands Massage and Sport Therapy Podcast, where we talk about how you can manage your pain and enhance your health. My name is Aiza Ismaila and I'm your host. Hello, hello, welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, I would like to talk about the difference between an active person and a sedentary person and their risk of injury. As I often hear um, when I treat people, you know, I have both cases. I have people being sedentary and I have people being injured. And, you know, I have some people who are sedentary telling me, you know, when I try to talk them through maybe engaging more mobility exercise, engaging more physical activity in the day-to-day life, you know, some people will tell me, you know, well, I'm not very active because, you know what, I can't afford to injure myself or, you know, um, I don't want to be injured. I mean, actually, who does want to be injured? Nobody. But um, so I want to bring something up and discuss today, you know, about the risk of being injured between a sedentary person and an active person. So, Let's talk first about someone who is active. So first of all, yes, being active sometimes doesn't have to be complicated at first, but um, many factors need to be taken into account. So we usually think, you know what, I want to go for a walk or even a run to challenge myself. And I may just need a, you know, a pair of shoes, a comfortable pair of shoes, you know, um, and to go out there. True. To start with is a great it's a great way to start. But then, you know, the equipment can be important. Um, you need to think about the type of equipment, maybe sometimes even the clothes you're wearing. You know, if you're not wear, wearing something, um, you know, an a, appropriate equipment to go for a run, that can have an impact on your performance or on your comfort. Um, we have nowadays a technology, you know, studying, depending on the movement we're doing and the activity to have the, the best product. And even, it doesn't have to be expensive, but the best product uh, for different type of activities and different shape and different type of food. So go for it. Get what you need to do it right. And to prevent any compensation from your body just because you're not comfortable, you're not wearing comfortable shoes to go for this run or you're going for a hike and you're wearing your day-to-day shoes, they're not really comfortable, they're not built for this. So get what you need to perform an appropriate activity. So I'll take the example of running because I had uh, this conversation very briefly um, yesterday as I met um, someone through my run um, and we had this chat about, you know, um, what you should, could be wearing, you know, as pair of shoes or clothes, etc. So let's take the example of running. So let's say you want to start running. So you need to have some comfortable shoes. So obviously comfortable shoes may not be your slippers, um, something that can have a better comfort, hold your ankle, to have a good ankle stability, but at least as well allowing movement. And we all have different types of feet with some kind of pronation, supination. So again, it's always ideal maybe to walk into a store where they can do some gait analysis. So try to see, you know, the way you walk, the way you put your foot down on the floor. Some have a treadmill even, so you can, you know, um, test and you can even try the pair of shoes on the treadmill and feel really if you know it is comfortable or not because how many of us bought a pair of shoes because in the store you just walk about you know you just do a few steps you just try it on you feel like oh it's good it's only when you're actually trying it outside on an actual run or an actual hike when it's about hiking that you realize that the, the pair of shoes maybe is you know not very comfortable and not ideal for you so think about that, for example. A great fit to choose when they do maybe a gait analysis to advise you the best pair of shoes for yourself. Then you may think about having a good equipment. If you're wearing a pair of jeans, it might not be great. The friction uh, it may irritate your skin. So nowadays we're lucky enough to have some 
quality fabric uh, made for different specific physical activity that will make you be comfortable and you know uh, take let you take advantage of this physical activity rather than you bring your attention that well this jean is not very comfortable I cannot really bring my leg up and reach really far forward when I do this run so uh, that can have an impact as well on your mindset and on your motivation. So pair of shoes, dress, and as well the surface, where are you going for your run? If you are, you know, in the street, um, that may have an impact as well on your health because maybe there's cars, if you're running on the curb, cars and the pollution, it's not great. It's ideal if you are somewhere, maybe even at least in a park, even though, well, the pollution is still there, but, you know, run trees that cut you off from, you know, the day-to-day environment, Ideally, um, I try myself to run either on the grass, either, you know, on a kind of more natural grind between the trees because there is a better absorption of energy um, for each impact you do. So when you are, for example, on the curb and you just are in the road, like when you will do races, um, when you race, for example, all the energy for each impact you have goes to the grind, but goes back up to your joint. So yes, you will go through this when you're the race. But if you can train in another environment, obviously that can have really an impact on reducing your risk of injury. So overall, yes, being active can promote or can have an impact on your body depending on many factors and can cause injuries so but it's you know you need to think big and think about you know posture because usually when you start when I start taking the example of myself when I start my run my posture I think is good not bad but you know what when I'm getting tired or when I'm going uphill because I'm struggling obviously my gait is not as good so I'm not paying much more attention this is where the weakness happens and the compensation pattern can happen as well, just because I know that I'm kind of struggling and I know that I won't, you know, make as much effort on having a good gait, a good positioning, bringing my leg as, you know, with a good flexion, etc. Like all those kind of movement. Um, so, yes, being active can have an impact on our musculoskeletal uh, system can put some strain on it, but it is important to have a good material. As mentioned before, it is important to have enough recovery. It's important to, you know, have enough time to sleep, take the time to sleep. Why not taking a power nap if possible? Um, Make sure your diet goes with it as well, you know. And it's all about, you know, seeing a person as a whole and trying to improve different aspects and that can have an impact on it. You know, having enough rest and not probably going every day or, you know, you need to have some days of rest and etc. Et and need to listen to your body. And it's not only about doing this run, it's about as well doing some uh, stretching, doing some strengthening exercise. It has to be very complete, you know, so if you always do one thing and only that one thing, well, overuse may happen. It's all, again, about balance and about challenging our body. So the difference is, well, when someone is active because they're moving and we are built for motion. Remember, motion is lotion episode. Because we are active and because we're moving as much we are more receptive, first of all, to any kind of niggle, any kind, anything that feels weird and bizarre and out of norm. We will be more aware of it. We will, you know, we'll have some kind of pain or some discomfort. And then it's up to us to pay attention to this signal and maybe address it. And don't ignore it. Address it. It's just a, a way for your body to communicate with you. There's something, there's a weakness there. Address it. If you're not sure, you want to see a doctor, you can go for it. You want to see a physio, go for it. You may get some um, particular exercise or go see a, a sports massage therapist like myself. We may look at balance between soft tissue and try to balance them out. So um, 
that can have an impact on reducing as well um, injuries. So it's all about paying attention. If you ignore the pain, you ignore the signal, any discomfort, then that's on you. But being active make you more aware, self-aware of your body, self-aware of your feelings and sensation on your body, which if you act quick in terms of prevention, first of all, as a maintenance, um, would highly recommend to get, you know, once every six weeks or every month to get some um, sports massage, as we already talked in the past, uh, in previous episode you know, um, to balance the muscle, always to kind of keep them into good tension, you know, things that your therapist will point out and maybe give you some stretches to carry on after your session to maintain it. But it's mainly about, you know, improving your perception and being um, connected with your body. You will feel there's an eagle, you will feel there's something... And if you address it in terms of prevention, in the long term, you'll do more benefit to your body. Someone who is sedentary, as an, unlike, unlike someone who is sedentary, because of the lack of movement, um, sometimes there's less, yeah, you may feel like you've been fine all your life. And here comes your 50, which is still very young, you're 50, you don't know where it is coming from, but from one day to another, there's some hip pain coming, happening, and you go see your doctor, and you've never really been active, just doing maybe a seated job, let's say, um, as because being seated, it's one of our kind of issue, including lack of variety of movement. When you see your doctor, you see different specialists, well, it looks like there's no cartilage, maybe on your knees or maybe on your hip joint. Well, you may need verdict as you may need um, hip replacement or knee replacement. Who does, who who wants to go through uh, that type of surgery? No, nobody really, even though it's getting much better, the recovery time is very quicker. So it's just the idea of high come, I never had anything ever. And now I have the verdict that I may need, you know, um, I may need to go through some um, surgery to have a hip replacement or knee replacement. So sometimes what I mean by that is sometimes when we are sedentary, we, we don't feel some signals. We don't, if we don't get regular treatment either, we don't do anything to maintain ourselves into some kind of balance uh, to maintain our muscles, skeletal system balanced, um, then the verdict when it comes down, it's something very radical. Um, it's just because we, and it's like coming out of nowhere. And this is why I believe being active will still give you some hint. Sometimes you will feel something going on. It's like using a car regularly and you will hear when there's something going on. And rather than having your car sitting here, like for a year, two, three years, you never really use it. And one day you need, or you plan a big trip and you use it. And on the way, you don't know why, but, you know, there's a big issue. And it's just because it was missing, you know, it needed some movement. It needed to be started. It needed to have some lubrification, you know, on the system, in the engine, the way it works. It needed to have some movement, so um, if you are avoiding physical activity to avoid the risk of being injured, I think you're wrong because as well, physical activity, since a very young age, all those games we do when we're kids, or at least we used to do, I don't know about the new generation, but those games we used to do, it's all about improving coordination, our stability. We learn how almost you know, when you learn how to do, you know, to roll and do a wheel, for example, on the floor from nursery school or primary school, it helps you even to approach a fall. Well, when you're getting older, because as well, because of low density in the bone, a fall can be as well very dangerous and can um, lead to fracture. But sometimes you have some people who are adult and a little fall and it can cause so much damage whenever, when you have more coordination you have a better reflex system, you break